So uh, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder is an antibody mediated disease. It's an autoimmune disease where pathogenic antibodies damage components of the central nervous system. And that results in blindness, uh, paralysis, and death. Um, it's a severe disorder, and it's characterized by these bouts of uh, severe inflammation. So patients develop optic neuritis, which is inflammation of the optic nerve, and myelitis, which is inflammation of the spinal cord. And if the inflammation in the spinal cord is high up enough, involving the components of the spinal cord that control respiratory drive, uh, patients can wind up on a ventilator and uh, succumb from respiratory paralysis. So it's a, it's a very severe disorder. It's uh, fortunately a, a relatively rare disorder. It's less common than, than multiple sclerosis. Um, and, but uh, it's a disease that uh, has been uh, able to be distinguished from MS by uh, work done primarily through the Mayo Clinic and other investigators who have found an antibody that's specific to NMO, almost always seen in NMO, uh, but is never seen in multiple sclerosis. And uh, this antibody is this pathogenic antibody directed against a protein called aquaporin-4. And so you have a blood test that can detect the presence of the antibody. This is the NMO IgG, or also known as uh, ATP4 antibody test. And this allows you to accurately diagnose neuromyelitis optica and distinguish it uh, from multiple sclerosis. So, um, you know, there was a lot of confusion over the last century about are they the same or different conditions? We now know that they are, in fact, different disease states and can be cleanly distinguished from each other. And we have very good diagnostic criteria for both MS and for NMO at this point. And uh, an ophthalmologist is going to see a, quite a few patients who present with optic neuritis. That's the inflammation of the, involving the optic nerve. Uh, and ophthalmologists should be aware that NMO and MS can both present with optic neuritis. At the time of presentation, it can be difficult to distinguish the two. Uh, just by looking in the back of the eye, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between NMO and, and MS. Um, but um, in patients who have an optic neuritis, the antibody test, uh, in my opinion, should be ordered to determine whether that optic neuritis is the first attack of NMO uh, or whether it, it could be MS. So in the same way that a brain MRI would be also an important study to order as well. So ophthalmologists should be aware uh, that these are distinct conditions. They have different treatments. Two treatments now are FDA approved for um, NMO, and there are, of course, many treatments available for MS. So if I were an ophthalmologist and I'm seeing a patient for optic neuritis, I would want to know um, about NMO and, and know that there is a commercially available antibody test and that making that diagnosis early on can be very important for the patient because of differences in treatment. I would say the other group of individuals who should know about this are people who are seeing patients in the emergency department, because many patients who present with myelitis come in with um, uh, paralysis or weakness and loss of sensation in the legs, urinary retention. Um, and uh, uh, those patients who get diagnosed with myelitis or transverse myelitis when it involves more uh, both the front and the back of the spinal cord, those, those patients um, should also be tested for aquaporin-4 antibodies. And uh, often they get a neuro neurological consultation in the emergency department where a neuro if a neurologist were to be available. So that's another group of uh, providers. So it's really neurologists, uh, ER doctors, and ophthalmologists who are going to be seeing NMO patients uh, for the first time. And just like with any disease state, early diagnosis is, is critical. Uh, if, we can, if we can make that diagnosis early on and introduce treatments early on, uh, then we have a, a, a great opportunity to uh, prevent further injury from subsequent attacks. There's also another presentation of NMO that often has um, puzzled physicians and providers, which is intractable nausea and vomiting. And a lot of the time when people come in with nausea and vomiting, they very appropriately get a gastrointestinal workup. They're seen by a gastroenterologist. They may get scoped. And, and there, of course, can be problems with the gastrointestinal system resulting in, in, in nausea and vomiting. 
But if all that workup is negative, one of the things to think about is, is N amount. And so I would say that's one more presentation of this disorder that is a neurological presentation that sometimes uh, gets missed and would be important for providers to be aware of. Thank you.